Good evening everybody. This is an impromptu live and so I'm just going to wait and see who comes on this evening. Seeing as though we are waiting until 8.30 for the President's address, I thought I would use this time just to encourage anybody that wants to come on board um, for a word of encouragement or some prayer and uh, use this time to be able to just encourage you. Lovely to see you Shirley and also Nadine and her husband Eugene and lovely to see you too Gerda. So just going to use a little bit of this time before the President's address to say hello to everybody and to encourage you. I did a painting today called uh, Africa uh, what was this? A Awaken. Africa Awakening. I'll show it to you quickly and then I will share a little bit with you. So, um, well done Shirley, just posted your first video. Let me just get the painting. Called Africa Awakening. It's really interesting how it ended up with a bit of a look a little bit of a look of the continent of Africa it wasn't planned and as I say all of the paintings are really the Lord the Lord's work and uh, and that's his glory pouring through that window or door as um, the African bride or we as uh, his children are expecting him to pour out his presence on us. So trust you can see that. I'm just gonna put it back. Um, some of the detail there. Put it back on the easel. Great. So um, thank you very much, Jenny, for saying it's amazing. And thank you, Linnell, Christopher. Wow, thanks, Hada. So I want to speak a little bit about how you have got through this day after this morning's live. Now, this morning's live was extremely, extremely prophetic. It was a download from heaven, um, almost unexpectedly the Lord had started to speak to me before I came onto the live and as you remember I had said we we're going to speak about uh, the faithfulness uh, of God <laughs> I see Carmen going I'll have that one also let's talk privately on that one Carmen if you are really serious about taking that that will be fine uh, and so th there was a whole download of how God is taking us into the new vehicle of ministry and that um, I'd had a dream and the vehicle had changed from my normal polo car to this black, very square, looked like nothing attractive from the outside, a black box. But when I got onto the inside of the car, it was nothing that I'd ever seen before. It was extremely futuristic and um, uh, and so uh, the Lord, when I woke up, the Lord spoke to me about it and he said that this is the new vehicle of ministry and um, I wanted to almost go back to what I knew because a few people had said, oh, it's, no, it's okay, but what happened to your other vehicle, the white polo? which can take more people because it was a four or five seater and this vehicle was myself and somebody sitting next to me and maybe I could squeeze somebody into the background. I know now it was myself and the Lord and um, that we, as we stretch into this new system or new season, that we must be careful not to reject the way the new way but to look at the new way and embrace it and allow the lord to unpack it for us and to show us how 
we are going to operate in this new season, even after lockdown. We certainly will not just be able to go back to business as usual. It will. It is a different season. So I just encouraged you this morning with that and gave out some prophetic words. And uh, I then spent some time with the Lord, as I said, because the anointing after ministering is still so evident and so thick. So I just spent time waiting, like da dampening down that that we received this morning. And then this afternoon I did that painting, Africa Awakening painting. Um, and then between the painting and now coming on, I have started to feel a heaviness in the spirit. And I feel that there are many that are afraid to hear that we the lockdown is going to be over. Some do not want to go back to normal and others are desperate for the lockdown to be over. I want to say to you that God knows exactly what he's doing and whether it's back to normal tomorrow, which it won't be, I can tell you that now, or whether it's a, a gradual opening or what it is, just know that Papa God is going to help us to um, be stretched in our spirit, but not when we're given the directive. Even now, he is stretching us to come in, in this time of preparation for how we will operate beyond the lockdown. And so I just encourage you in that, that if you've been feeling really pressurized, just know that God wants us not to be dressed for where we find ourselves, but dressed for the future. So in other words, God is awakening places inside of us and dressing us spiritually with good gifts and calling for what we're going into in the future. I believe the future is going to require anointing, a, um, a mature anointing. I believe that the church was pulled up, the handbrake of how we were doing things, we were pulled up because um, there was quite low levels of the way, in general, the way the church was going. And I watched a program, uh, an interview with a pastor online two nights ago, and he said that this lockdown had been the greatest wake-up call he had personally had. And I want to tell you he's not a nobody. God is using him on many levels and he belongs. He's on a lot of governing bodies and, and, uh, and, and things like that. Very relevant things that are happening in the country. But he said the Lord started to speak to him about if my people are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And... Um, he said that he began to repent and not repenting for the nation, but repenting for personal sin, not that he was in sin, but that he realized as a leader that there was very little happening in the way of reaching the lost, that he got used to having a group of people that he ministered to and were feeding his love tank and he was feeding their love tank. And by this pulling up in the spirit, he had to start to repent that he, the church and uh, for himself, that he started to lose his momentum and that this time that he had now to not be so busy out there had been an awakening for him. You know, the word of God says that we are to choose men or women, men and women, to serve at tables and do the serving so that those that are called to present the word can separate themselves to prayer and fasting. If we truly are priests or shepherds, we need to have time to go into the presence of the Lord so that when we come out to minister, we have come out from the Holy of Holies. When the high priest went in, 
to the Holy of Holies. Um, they went in and the sacrifice was accepted because the priest was right before the Lord. And the sacrifice that he brought was without spot, wrinkle and blemish. So the Lord is refreshing, renewing and uh, bringing a reformation to the church from the top down. From the top down, leaders are being renewed. Leaders are beginning to stand up and it's not stand up in a um, in a prescriptive way, in a dominant way. They are standing up to understand their destiny, their call and their identity. I remember about six to eight months ago saying to my little family here where I live, saying to them, I believe that within the next seven to ten years we're going to come uh, Jesus is coming back. And I still can't tell you that God said it. I just had a, a feeling that we're living in urgent times. But the thing that upset me, not upset me, but disturbed me the most, is that the church around the world was going on as usual and there's very little mention about the return of Jesus Christ. And that really, really gave me a burden to begin to prepare the bride. I think this is the season that we're coming into. Number one, to bring in the harvest of the lost. And number two, to prepare the believers in character and strength, devotion, anointing, that we will walk in the end time anointings, being dressed for where we're going to, not being dressed from what we've come out of. For what we've come out of will leave us with some bruising. I have more people contacting me about the fact that the church of Jesus hurt them. And we need to forgive one another and we need to encourage one another because we're going into a whole reformation. And first reformation, which means a renewing of your mind and your spirit and then revival is about new fire, new anointing, new call, and that's exciting. So are you ready? Don't lag behind. Embrace what the Lord is doing in you and through you, and uh, give him permission to, to take you into supernatural experiences. So for those that are coming online for the first time today, this morning, as I was listening to, um, I was listening to, I was listening to a video clip by Albert Einstein, and he gave this letter to his daughter, and he said, "Don't the people are not ready for this, but this is where it should be." And when she read the letter, he spoke on love. And how love is the greatest tool and the greatest, um, I can't say invention, but the greatest power that will change the world. And as he finished, there was such a download of Holy Spirit in my belly. And the Lord said to me, step in to this anointing of love. This anointing of love that is not spiteful. This anointing of love that has got long suffering. This anointing of love that keeps no record of wrongs. This anointing of love that is patient and kind. And I believe that the body of Christ are looking for kind leaders. Leaders that will lead with kindness but with authority. And not authority of the earth but the authority of Jesus. And Jesus' authority on the earth was the kindness. The kindness of his nature. That he was kind. He didn't go to the woman at the well and say, you rotter, you've had five men and the man that you're with is not even your husband. He told her her condition and ministered deeply to her and then said, go and live a different way. So go and sin no more. So he went, just live differently now because your life has been touched by my kingdom. And um, the man lying at the pool of Beth Esther, he asked him, does he want to be well? <clears throat> and he didn't rebuke him. 
and say, you had no faith, you were waiting for the angel to stir the water. He just encouraged him to get well. To the man that was lowered through the roof, he didn't go off that the roof was broken. He said, pick up your bed and walk. To the centurion, he said, your faith has healed your daughter. I've never seen such um, a man that understands, who's under authority and understands authority. So you can see it's an anointing of the love of God coupled with the, with the um, authority of heaven. And, and so that is incredible, absolutely incredible. So when you get discouraged and you f you're not sure what the president is going to say tonight, but you're already, dis you're already in anxiety, knowing that even if you go back to work, there's such a financial deficit that you don't know what to do. I want to say to you before you even hear what he has to say, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Know that God loves you, that God understands that God can see past your fear and he is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. He's going to watch over you. He's going to put his shield and protection around you and he's not going to, he's not going to let you fail. He's going to add to your life and not take away. Therefore, whatever they decide tonight will not disturb that that God has awakened you to. Prophecies are promises before you go into a battle. And so the Lord will give you a promise because he knows that you need to hold a banner of promise before the enemy so that you will go through and not feel like your legs have been taken off underneath you. Yesterday was the first day I went to the shops after since lockdown. And I must say, when I saw red and white tape closing up certain parts of the buildings and that, it's quite depressing. This, and the Lord said, do not be, con uh, he said, what you behold is what you become. So he says, don't behold the deadness that you see. Embrace my everlasting plan and my life. God wants to put a fresh anointing on us and give us victory even when there's calamity and death around us. God deals with us, each one, individually, and he wants to give you victory even when there's calamity around you. Even though it feels or looks like all is failing, God is preparing you for an anointed season. And even death, as in death of the church or death of the vision or death of the business, Death makes way for life. Lest a seed fall into the ground and die, it cannot produce fruit. And so there are some things that are being cut off, being cut off, or are being cut off our lives at this moment. And the anointing that God is putting on you, or has put on you, even this day, as we spoke about that this morning, opens the places that have been locked. The anointing destroys the yoke and opens the places that seem so locked. Anointing is the door opener and brings you into the gates. Now doors represent entry and gates represent authority. So our heart's cry now is we want to go through the door of opportunity and we want to ask that his gates and that he be lifted up, be lifted up your gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. We want the King of glory to come into our circumstances and our lives in an amazing way. And then uh, anointing gives sight to blind eyes. So God is giving us fresh vision for what we're about to come into. He's giving us high levels of anointing he's giving us a new fragrance he's giving us new eyesight he's giving us a new uh, word to speak he's giving us new levels of revelation all of this is part of the new season and we need to lay aside the garments of heaviness 
and start to celebrate the promised land that we're about to come into. It might not look like that in the natural, but it certainly is a new space of celebration in the spiritual. First the natural and then the spiritual. Even as there is no legal selling of wine uh, right now, God is about to give us spiritual wine that will make the heart glad and will bring fresh anointing into your call and your ministry that people will wonder how you are able to pray and see the result for their lives as you agree with them for their new season. Not only have you come into a new season, but you have uh, the keys in your hand to unlock the prison doors to bring those that are hungry for it to come into their new season as well. God is not about to resurrect the old. He is busy unveiling the new. So don't look for everything to go back as same old, same old, a usual, usual. The season you've been in for so long is shifting. How many of you that have been watching now on this short live um, have been longing, longing for the new, longing for fresh levels, longing for the supernatural, longing for uh, encounters with God? Some of you even have prophetic words from up to 10 years, a decade ago, that you will have supernatural encounters, that you are going to be caught up with the Lord uh, for hours at a time, and you're saying it hasn't happened. It's on its way. It is here. As you say to the Lord, here I am, Lord. I'm available to be a carrier of the supernatural. I am going to step into a bold anointing and not in a dialed down uh, uh, um, model that man has put on me. I'm going to be, I'm going to walk in the new day, dressed in the new anointing, demonstrating the new uh, authority, and everything that you get must have that word new in front of it. So something comes your way, you want to examine it and say, is this part of the new or is this part of the old? If it's part of the new, I'm taking it on board. If it's part of the old, I'm putting it there. It's like packing, um, spring cleaning a home. One to keep, one to give away, and one we're not sure. And Father says, some of it you need to give it away. You need to change, you need to pass the baton to somebody else because it's time for you to move into a new season. So Gerda, I want to minister to you tonight. My daughter, says the Lord, he says, you've been through a, 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 a huge season of remaking. He's taken you from a season of um, just coping to a season of remaking. And in that time of remaking, he has resurrected the, the, um, the hunger and the passion inside of you that you had even from the beginning. And Father says, and now watch and see what is going to happen. He said, I'm giving you a new level of authority that what you speak to will move and what you put your hand to will prosper. No longer will you feel like you're eating the crumbs of somebody else's leftover ideas. He said, I'm going to cause you to be one that will lead and not just one that will follow. So Father says, I have collected those tears of uh, regret. Be, uh, uh, before my throne and he says you have already stepped into your new day he says watch out world for years she comes so father i just bless Hada for this word that you have released over her tonight that she's in a new season a new anointing a new authority and then the lord also says i want you to know that there is therefore right now Hada, no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus Father says anything that comes against you in the area of condemnation or accusation comes down tonight in Jesus' name. Father says you are not starting at ground uh, zero or ground level. He said you are, uh, I, I'm, I am revving the engine of 
who you are and you are going to accelerate into the season that has just opened more firmly to you now than ever before. So we just thank you, Father. Um, yes, for Eugene and Nadine, a father says, um, I'm sorry, I'm just reading your, your, um, your comments here. Okay, so the father says to you as a couple, he says, uh, the season of delay is over. It's like the two of you have an amazing amount of agreement. The power of agreement is what has kept you and what has brought you from one level to another level. But Father says there seems to have been delays and a disappointment and you think it's just about to break open and then it seems to regress again. But Father says no longer, no longer. This is now it's a season of absolutes and it's a season of momentum so he says rejoice and be glad that 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 you've waited for is has come now and you will see it begin to uh, increase and um the lord says i'm going to add field to field now i don't know if that means physical property or if it means spiritual ministry different types of ministry being added but there's an expansion as he uh, adds field to field. Father, I thank you for them as a couple, Nadine and Eugene, and I thank you, Father, for their heart for men, for women, for ministry, for uh, marriage, and uh, for development. I thank you that they know how to develop God's people, and I thank you that you do that in them, Father, and do it through them. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. What a wonderful father. Everybody happy? <laughs> God is good. Isn't it lovely that we can just hang out? We've got a bit of time on our hands and we can just hang out. Lovely to see Elisheva, Poseidon, her very special lady. She heads up tours to Israel. And uh, Elisheva, I'll never forget the day that I came up from the Jordan River and I, the Lord had asked me to wash my feet in the river and my hands on my face and that would I put down the pain that I was going through with Lionel being so sick. And as I walked up the hill back to the bus and you just embraced me and together we gave the situation to the Lord. And... Uh, Elisheva, you too have gone through so much in your life, so many battles, so many ups and downs. And the Father says, 2020 has meant, was meant to be your best year ever. But he says, don't worry, my daughter. It's a decade of change, not just a year of change. And so even though you feel like it's opened up so slowly and you feel like, well, what was the use of that? The year opened with such a bang and then ended up in a grinding halt. The father says, I have not forgotten you and your family. My hand is upon them. And I want you to know that I'm answering the prayers that you pray at night for even as you lie in your bed. I'm the reader of hearts, says the father. And I read, I've read the heart, your heart. And I, I'm preserving your heart for inside the heart is the wellspring of life. And Father says, at, at times when you don't know what even to ask anymore, he says, it's okay for the Holy Spirit inside of you cries out, Abba, Father. So rest in me and know that I have promised you a, a year of blessing and increase but it's not just a year, it's a decade. I am the God that gives you long life. I give you long life. Do not fear anything that has come against you, says the Lord. God bless you, Eliza. You're beautiful. I see that Daryl knows Eugene. That's lovely. That's cool to know. It's lovely to see friends that are friends of friends. 
Melanie Gladwin, oh my goodness, is this a beautiful woman of God? And Melanie, your faith, your faith is what is propelling um, the increase of healing in the circumstances, even with your husband. Father loves that you are not moved by man's report. For whose report will you believe? You've decided to believe the report of the Lord. And so keep holding on to God's righteous right hand day by day, moment by moment. God is walking ahead of the circumstances and he has put his wing over you and he's given you such grace to walk in these circumstances right now. And uh, it's all good. It's going to be good. Very good. Thank you, Father. Mm. I don't know Kaylee Erasmus, but Kaylee says, well, this is like God speaking directly to me. Uh, Kaylee, I present you before the Lord this evening. And I say, Father, I bring Kaylee to you and I ask you to bless her, for you know her. You know her. And I ask you to bless her father. Father says, Kaylee, you've been asking me certain questions. You've been waiting on me. And father says, I want you to know that that nudging inside of you is not you speaking to yourself. Many times you think you are reasoning with yourself, but you're not. You're reasoning with me. And father says, my yes is yes and my no is my no. So therefore do not be distracted. Know that the path that you're on, you just keep moving straight forward. Even if it looks like there is a cul-de-sac, Father says, as I opened the Red Sea for those uh, that I took through the Red Sea, I'll open the way ahead of you and um, the, ma the, the uh, enemy behind you will be scattered. Thank you, Lord. Friends with Gail, that's right, I remember now. I hope that that word encourages you. Nick Mitchell, wonderful to see you online. And uh, I know, Nick, that you've been going through a very, very hard time uh, over quite a long period now. And you feel like your life has gone around the same mountain, the same mountain, the same mountain. And every now and then there's a flicker of hope and you go, well, this is it now. This thing's going to break and I'm going to come into my best uh, life. And then when you look again, it's like a mirage the thing, or it's like um, you feel like, nah, I can park this thing and it can be settled. And then it goes down the hill backwards, it's like the handbrake. <laughs> if you feel like it, your life is this vehicle and the handbrake slipped and it went down backwards. But Father says to say to you, Nick, that he knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. And he knows your address. There's nothing about your life that escapes him. And uh, he has started to draw you. He's been wooing your heart to inquire of him and to seek him. He's put incredible people across your path that have demonstrated the kindness of God to you. And uh, the Lord just, I feel the Lord saying to encourage you that it's not whether you're good or whether you're bad. That's for all of us. It's The fact is that God loves you, even just the way he found you. And so hold on and hold tight. Don't lose hope. Hold on and hold tight, Nick, for God is walking this road ahead of you. He wants you to rest in him, and he's going to make your heart glad. All the disappointment and the brokenness is going to give, is going to give way to the divine promises and providence of God. And then he says, I am not a dictatorial king sitting on a throne about to blot you out. No, he says, I'm a good, good father. Even as you are a good father to your daughter, so I am a good father to my children. And so he says, this your life is not wasted i will restore what the locust and the canker worm has eaten i will repay the places of loss 
and you will be built up again even though right now you feel like your walls have been broken down thank you lord i hope that encourages you nick thank you lord nice to see you on board johan i look forward to tomorrow evening when we do the zoom teaching all the way from cape town to belfast i'm looking forward to it and excited to see what papa god's going to do uh as he's uh, speaks to his children oh thank you Lana that your beautiful daughter says that I look like a princess that's very nice I like that I got my tell her I've got my princess necklace on tonight and Lana tell her that I am beginning to feel like a princess in the fact that God Jesus has been healing me from the loss of Lionel and I'm beginning to feel like God's princess because as my husband loved me so Father God loves me and um, is rebuilding my confidence and my strength in him yes yes I the shofars are going outside here in the background that's why my dog was barking where i live people are rejoicing that they can hear their neighbors daryl holmes when you moved back to the eastern cape you knew it was god and you moved with uh with uh boldness and uh the lord says the fullness of your moving there is still at hand still at hand and so it is the the purpose of you being back there is beginning to, it's going to pick up momentum you cannot evaluate it in this time of lockdown but father says it it's going to um gather momentum for you in your life and the lord says i'm going to use you daryl as a connector with people particularly with men and uh you're going to be full of the joy of the Lord and say, this is what I was born for. Really is um, about serving, um, serving in ministry, um, not having your own ministry, but serving those that are in the front lines. And you're going to come into great purpose, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. <laughs> I see Debbie Robinson on board and uh, Debbie I love that it was your husband I think that was playing the guitar um, entertaining the neighbors and it was very special I loved it I had such a lovely laugh about it hmm. thank you Sue Dickie yes Papa has healed my heart and I feel like I've got a smile not only on my face but back in my eyes again so yeah, the love of God and the healing of God is phenomenal. So phenomenal. Thank you, uh, Mariki van Sale, for that compliment. Thank you. Yes. So I think I'm going to leave you to get on with your evening. And uh, I will be back online at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And thank you. For popping on 32 of you for popping on board and um, just spending some hangout time um, let's I want to pray for you father I thank you that um, for each and every one that has come online tonight I ask you to bless them bless them internally in the deepest workings of their heart Bless them with peace that passes all understanding. Bless them with the gentleness of your love. I pray, Father, that they will experience how special you are. I pray that they will have godly dreams. That as they step into their new season, that they step into this place of reward. 
that they receive double honor. That those that have waited many years for their new season are going to laugh and cry. Laugh because they're excited and cry because they're excited and it's just sheer relief that they've come into that that you have promised. Uh, we are so blessed, Father, that it's not dependent on our, us working harder. It's dependent on the fullness of time and the time-loaded promises that you are unpacking upon the earth and upon your, upon your people. So I bless them in the coming and their going. I bless them in their basket and in their stall. I bless them with the spirit of recovery. Recovery of sight for their vision. Recovery in their finances in this very difficult time. A divine reversal in those places that they felt they were losing ground, that they will recover. I pray what you instructed David. You said, go up. Pursue the enemy, overtake, and recover all. So I bless them with a place of recovery to get back all that the enemy has stolen. I thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus does this, and the name of Jesus seals this blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Sleep tight. We'll talk again tomorrow. God bless you all. You're just so amazing. Never let the devil put you down. Never let fear of man break you. Never let fear of failure stop you pushing in to the adventure and being courageous. Thank you, Chada. I agree with you. The anointing in our times together has increased time and time again. It is thick as he wraps us in his all-encompassing love. Daryl, I want to remind you of the meetings that we did, did at Signal Room in Bloberg and all that we did in those meetings is we are walking in the result of the pressing in that we did for something huge in the way of revival to settle on South Africa and so Father is going to bless South Africa and bring the promise of revival into being as we cooperated with him in this time and have pressed in in the groundwork. Good night. God bless you. This is a um, short message from Rose Rudo, Word of Life, Fisher Cape Town, and I'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning.